Friday, December 8, 2017. 23-year-old Evan Henson was preparing for an event when he told a co-worker he didn't feel well. Seconds later, he passed out and his co-worker began CPR. His family got the call. We were just thinking something silly happened, like a, he had low blood sugar or he um, fell or something that really could be easily fixed. The reality was much worse. While Evan, a CrossFit coach, had no history of heart problems, he had gone into sudden cardiac arrest. 95% of the time that happens outside the hospital, the patient doesn't survive. And the doctor said, your son's very sick, and I don't think we can save him. I'm working on him, I'm doing all I can, but it looks bad. As the emergency teams tried to stabilize Evan's heart, he coded three times. And unfortunately, that heart was squeezing at 10%. That really showed us how sick his heart was. And at that point, we weren't very sure if it was going to recover or if he was going to stay um, in congestive heart failure. And I remember my sister walking out, and she was crying. And she was like, Carly, don't go back there. And I was like, if this is the last time I see my brother, I'm going to go back there. And during that time, he coded again. I think that was the moment where like, the fear really hit that this might be the last time. As the hours went on, the doctors gave Evan's family the grim truth. Evan could die in the next five minutes. He could live overnight, but then die the next morning, or he could make a full recovery. And he said, I'm really betting on you know option three, but it's not likely. The doctor gave the family a job of their own to do, pray. They called everyone they could, and within minutes, their friends showed up. The whole lobby was full of people. I would say at least 45, 50 people. It was amazing, and we basically took over the emergency room. Evan made it through the night, but he was hardly out of the woods. His organs were shutting down. I remember going to the bathroom and just getting on my knees and crying and praying, and I remember saying, God, if you need to take Evan, you know, you're still good. Dr. Giddens prayed with the family and decided Evan's best shot at survival was a transfer to St. Joseph's Hospital, a journey that was risky in itself. He again went into cardiac arrest on the stretcher, but luckily the nurse had the defibrillator in her hand and the machine could not fit on the helicopter. And so what we did was pack him down with maybe 20 bags of ice uh, to keep his body at core temperature. In the meantime, Evan started showing signs of improvement his organs started to work again. We just put it out on Facebook. Hey, this is what the report we got this morning at 8.30. Please pray that his organs will, you know, get better. And by that night, they were. Everybody in the room was like dumbfounded because he went from like a 0% chance to, okay, his organs are completely fine. Even more surprising, his heart went from 10% functionality to 30, but no one knew what his brain activity would be. By day three, Evan started to wake up. He opened his eyes and he's rolling his head and I said, it's mom, it's mom, we're here. You're gonna be okay. I said, everybody's been coming to visit. Your CrossFit team was here. And the minute I said CrossFit, his head raised like this and he's looking around. He's looking for those CrossFit buddies. And his tears just rolled down my eyes, and I said, he's got brain activity. He knows what I'm talking about. Amazingly, Evan continued to improve. Within five days, they came in and said his heart was back to almost perfectly normal, where it looked like it never happened, and they couldn't understand it. I just always believe that we can't underestimate the importance and the value of faith and prayer and a supportive family um, at the bedside. Nothing can replace that. Two weeks after being admitted to the hospital, Evan Hinson came home just in time for Christmas. That was the main goal. I just want to wake up on Christmas Day and be able to go into the living room and spend time with my family. I know that was the best Christmas we ever had when Evan came home. And it was the first Christmas that we didn't have a fight. We didn't have drama. We just enjoyed being together. And we enjoyed life. And, and thank God for what we had in that moment. Is this the same 
Today, Evan is working and going to college and showing no signs of heart issues. Gosh, to look at Evan. <laughs> you know, God is amazing and he's so great. And I'm so blessed that he's here today. I'm so blessed. She sent me a text in last December and she said I got back the best Christmas gift I could ever ask for. I got back my son. They put it in. Eben now has a scar and as a precaution wears a pacemaker. But the biggest reminder of his Christmas miracle happens when people Evan has never met tell him they were praying for his recovery. It ended up giving me a lot of confidence in the Lord and in my faith and um, be able to, to really truly understand that he does do miracles and it's just allowed me to really see that he does have a, a plan for my life and that he controls a lot more than I think he does. Praise God. God is in total control. But you know, I took away from that story what that doctor was saying. I mean, to hear a doctor say, don't underestimate the power of faith and prayer. God wants to do miracles. He wants to show himself strong in our lives. And that's exactly what we want to do. We want to pray that God will show himself strong in your life, regardless of how difficult the issue is, God is in control. We want to read to you some really good reports to boost your faith before we pray. Emily from YouTube says, I developed Kahn's disease around Christmas a few years ago. I went to the hospital with arterial blood pressure of 258 over 158. Wow. My community prayed fervently for my healing. During a Christmas service, I saw bursts of light everywhere and all the pressure I had been feeling on my bladder vanished. My blood pressure came down to 138 over 98, and I have gradually been able to hugely reduce the medication. I thank God. Praise so God. So do we. So do we. Here's another testimony from a viewer named Nancy. I was delivered, from, this is interesting, from alcoholism in an hour. It was a moment of repentance and realizing the need I had for my Savior. I've been set free for three years now. My husband is still a prodigal, but I know God is able to save him. Wow. Tremendous reports. In our final moments here, Charlene and I do want to pray for you. Let's do that now. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for these reports we've heard. We thank you for the story we saw, Lord God. As Charlene has said, Lord, you're in control. Father, just speak to us now. Speak to the viewers. I just feel like there's a, a message of comfort for someone. There's a family with someone in the hospital, and you already know that you're not going to, this loved one is going to be in the hospital Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and there's great sadness regarding uh, being apart. I just feel like the Lord wants you to know He is with you. He is present. Celebration regarding the birth of our Savior goes on. God is on the throne, and your loved one is going to recognize Jesus and His Spirit this Christmas Day. Your family's going to see a miracle. Thank you, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Jesus, I mean, even as Andrew was saying, what he was saying about someone being in the hospital, I just felt like there's some who have a spirit of heaviness because loved ones are ill or uh, have passed on. But the Lord says you are going to experience a refreshing and a joy from his presence this Christmas. He's going to lift that off of you right now, that heaviness is leaving, and he is filling you with the Holy Spirit and with his joy, joy in the Lord, and you're going to rejoice. It's a supernatural joy. It's a gift mm -hmm. from God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, someone else heard that praise report about alcoholism, and they said, I want that. I want to be delivered of my dependence on alcohol. And the Lord not only wants to deliver you from that, He wants to reveal why you have become so dependent on this. What started out, it seems so harmless in a way to cope, has now become a burden. He's going to reveal not only the reasons for it, but also He's going to deliver you of that. I want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus for those in bondage to alcohol, Father God. Jesus, right now, break those, us, break those bonds of addiction right now in the name of Jesus. We pursue righteousness not the things of the flesh. Thank you for victory in the name of Jesus, amen. Hello, I'm Gordon Robertson. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more encouraging videos like this one. Welcome to the 700 Club Interactive Family, and God bless you.